What is this? Why is it that my LED is glowing? It shouldn't be glowing. Look at my circuit over here. My circuit has three buttons and those three buttons are all off right now. So why am I getting this phantom spooky glow? My circuit's working. Look, I can push a button. I can push the next button and the next and I get different intensities of LEDs. So I know it's working, but if I don't push anything, I'm not supposed to have a glow. This is a bit spooky. Actually, this reminds me of a story. <laughs> it reminds me of when I was, I think I was nine years old. Yeah, nine years old. And me and my family, me and my parents, it was just me, I grew up as an only child. We had moved into a new neighborhood, brand new neighborhood. And you know how that goes, right? So I went to, uh, it's a new school, new friends, new environment. And of course the schoolyard kids, they were not nice. <laughs> they, um, they started telling me stories about the family that lived in the house prior to when we lived there. So the family that just had um, moved out. Um, they had an unfortunate incident. They told me that the boy who lived in that house, who, by the way, had the same room that I now have, he ended his life prematurely. Scary stuff. Now I'm living in this house with this kid who did that. It's just stories. Just schoolyard stories. Right? I don't know. Maybe they were, maybe they weren't. It was the 80s. It was hard to do the research at the time. <laughs> but I remember that night. I went to sleep that night. I lay down in my bed. And the way my room was, um, the, the closet was, it didn't have doors on it. It was one of those closets with, uh, it was a full wall closet, but it had curtains across it. And so it was at the foot of my bed when I was lying down. So that night, as most nine-year-old kids, you know, you turn on your, your nightlight. So I had my nightlight on, which wasn't very bright, but just enough to see a little bit in the room. Lay down in my bed. And then I just, I looked down towards the closet. And I thought I saw the curtain was open. And which was weird, because I usually close it. Anyways, I was about to get up to close the curtain. And then I started noticing something inside the closet. Look like a, like a, like a small human figure kind of leaning out like this of the closet. Couldn't see its face, just a silhouette, just leaning out. Oh, I was so scared. The fear was thick. I remember going under my bed sheets and just crying myself to sleep that night. Ah. Oh. The instillation of fear from the schoolyard kids, oh, it worked. That's a true story. Like I said, I don't know about the history of the house, but uh, well, but that really did happen. Now, that's a lot less, actually, that's a lot more spookier than the situation we have here. This is not as spooky, but it still is. I don't understand. Well, actually, no, spoiler alert, I do understand <laughs> why we have this glowing LED. Anyways, look, look at our circuit here. And, and I think if we, if we look at the circuit carefully, we're going to figure out why we have this glowing LED, right? So these are the current paths of the switches and they're all off. All my switches are off. So the only way that current can be flowing through this LED is, well, if it's flowing through this LED and down this transistor. And that's probably what's happening. We can put an end to it though. This MOSFET right here controls everything. If I turn this MOSFET off, meaning make sure that this doesn't conduct anything, well, that LED will turn off. We can try it. Take a look at this. I'll just get a wire here. All right. And I'm gonna plug this in so that I'm gonna take this LED or turn this MOSFET off. So that means I'm gonna take this point right here and push it to ground. If I do that, our LED should turn off. Let's try it. All right, so that point is right over there. And if I put this to ground, let's see what happens. Ah, my light turned off. Brilliant. Okay, so if it's off, that part works. But when I do this, the buttons don't work. <laughs> so of course my light isn't working at all now. I've got to rig up a way so that when no buttons are pressed, the light is off and this point is ground, just like it is now. But as soon as a button gets pressed, I want that, I want this ground to be released. 
I want it to operate kind of like that. Of course, I don't want to have to do it manually. I want it happen. I want it to happen automatically. And well, with the wonders of digital logic, I think we can. All right. So let's think about this logically, right? If any of these switches are on, then I want this to be off. Let me, I'm going to draw in a little temporary switch here just for fun. All right. I'm just going to, let's make a pretend switch here. All right. I'm going to call this switch P. All right. And let's put this to ground. All right. So that's a switch. And I want this switch to be automatically controlled based on these inputs over here. So I've written in a little of the logic here. Let me show you the logic. If switch one is on or switch two is on or switch three is on, then switch P is off. All right, that's pretty straightforward. We can figure out a circuit that's gonna help us take this logic and apply it to the switch. How do we do that? Well, let's take a look at what we find on Wikipedia. <laughs> all right, let's take a look at here. I'll bring it up on the screen so we can see all this fun stuff here. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so here is our trusty Wikipedia. And um, it what I've, what I've got here is this idea of an OR gate. So take a look at this OR gate. What an OR gate says, if you look at this input output um, table over here, it says that if input A is zero and input B is zero, let's, let's pretend that zero is off and one is on. So if A is zero or A is off and B is off, that means the output is also off. And if any one of those inputs turn on, then the output turns on. It's kind of what we want. <laughs> We actually want the opposite, right? We want, if any of our inputs are on, we want that to turn off. Okay, so we want the actual opposite here, but we can start with this, right? Now, if I scroll down a little bit, you'll see that this is the, the very familiar symbol of an OR, um, a, a, well, it's an OR symbol, and we can use this on our schematics, but what's more important is that you can actually get this, you can actually get this sort of stuff. So here is those OR symbols distributed inside of a chip. That means I could go out and buy a chip, a logic chip, and put it onto my circuit, and I'll be able to do this kind of logic. So right away, there's, well, a few problems. My first problem is that I don't actually have two inputs. I have three inputs, maybe even more. Right now I got three, but remember, if we want to expand on this, we might want to add more switches or add more current paths. So right away, I'm going to need more than just two. Another problem, I've already mentioned this, is I don't want this output, I want the opposite of that output, right? And of course, my third problem is that I don't actually have one of these chips. Although they're available on the market and I could very well go out and buy one, um, I don't have it. And as you've so far seen in the rest of my videos, by the way, if you haven't seen the previous videos, take a look. Um, I'm trying to make use of the parts that I have with me, right? Now, as a as electronics guy, I tend to have a bit of parts lying around. Um, I just don't have this one. Okay, so this is going to be a little bit of a problem for us. Let me let me resolve the first problem. The first one is uh, this idea of uh, more than two inputs, right? In, the, in our case, we want three. So while there are available, like you can actually get other circuits or chips out there with three inputs, they're actually a little bit harder to find. So uh, because we don't even have one, I think that problem kind of goes away on its own. But nonetheless, this table still works. This OR logic still works with more than two inputs. I can have three, I can have four, I can have as many as we want, and this logic will still work. So I think we're still okay there. Um, but like I said, it's hard to get the chip chips for those kind of inputs. Luckily, there is another way, or there's actually a lot of ways to implement this in hardware. But if I keep scrolling down in Wikipedia, it actually gives us a few other ways to do it. The one that interests me and actually is the easiest one to build as far as I'm concerned is the one right here on the right. It uses diodes. So these things over here, they look a lot like our LED, don't they? And they're actually kind of the same. An LED is after all a light emitting diode. Functionally, it works the exact same way. Current can only go through one way. It will not go through the other way. Um, the only difference between an LED and the diode here is that an LED gives off light when it works. And these kind of diodes don't visibly do anything, right? But what they do do 
is make sure that the current can only go through one way. And that's going to allow us to create these OR gates. And the other cool thing about it is I can just add as many inputs as I want here, and I'm still going to get that OR functionality. Another good thing is I've got them. <laughs> I've got plenty of diodes that we can use. So we'll use these diodes because, hey, I've got them. There's a circuit. Works wonderfully. OK, but we still have one problem, right? The output of this OR is not exactly what we want. We want the opposite. Well, it turns out there's another logic gate out there. It's called the inverter. And this inverter does exactly what we want. It takes the input and it flips it to the output. So in a way, we can take our OR logic and then add on to it our inverter logic. And at the end of the day, I'm going to get the exact same output that I've described here in words. This might just work. Here's the other thing. If I scroll down in the inverter logic, I scroll down far enough, I'll see that, oh, look at that. I can actually buy inverter chips on the market. Now, here's the thing. I actually do have this chip here. <laughs> and so I do have this, but we're not gonna use it. Um, A, because, well, if you look at the chip, it, it actually has like six of them on one, and I only need one of these things, right? So it's a kind of a waste of a chip right now. And the other thing, it's actually easy to build even without using this chip. There's a few other examples here, and the one that I like the most is the one right here on the top left. It's an NMOS NOT gate. So this will allow us to create an inverter using a MOSFET, which, as you know, we already have. So I'm going to build um, the OR gate, right, using this diode system. We have three switches, so I'm going to build it. And then I'm going to follow that OR gate with this inverter using a MOSFET. And then once I have that, we'll get to the rest later. For now, let me draw that into our circuit and we'll see where we get. Okay, bear with me while I draw it in. There we go. Yeah, we got it. So this is uh, the circuit as it is right now with um, our three diodes. One, two, three. These three diodes and that resistor over there make that OR gate. So what that means is if switch one is on or switch two is on or switch three is on, then this point right here right, will be on. That's the OR part. And then as that OR gets to this MOSFET over here, if you remember from the, the site on Wiki, uh, the uh, image on Wikipedia, that this will actually take that on and turn it off. So this acts like an inverter. And this location right over here will be my off signal. So I've done it. I've now taken my switch one, switch two, switch three, and turned this into an off signal if any of these things turn on. Now, of course, I have to change this because I can't actually use a switch here. I can go ahead and use just another one of these fancy little MOSFETs, and that's going to help. That's going to allow me to either turn on this path or turn off the path. Let me draw it in. There we go. All right. So there we have our parts. Now I have. All, oh, sorry. There we have our schematic. I have the parts to build this as well, right? So let me show you our parts. I've got three diodes. One, two, and three. I'm going to orient them the right way because remember, they only go one way. So here's my three diodes, right? That resistor, I have a 10K resistor, which is always a nice, um, nice uh, size to use. At least I think I have a 10K resistor. I'll find one when I build it. Okay, so I got, I got, oh, there they are. I got a bunch of these things. So here's my, here's a 10K I got lying around. So I'm going to use that. All right. Now, these are the same MOSFETs that uh, we've already been using. So I have a bunch of these as well. So there's our BS270 MOSFET, same one. And here's another MOSFET we can use as well. And same for this. We're going to actually want to have a resistor over there. 10K is a good, nice number to use. All right. Why, by the way, am I using 10K? Well, 
I have them. <laughs> the main reason is because I got lots of them and they help keep our current low. Um, generally, I like to start with a nice low current unless I know I need more. In this situation, I know that uh, these diodes need some current for it to work. So that 10K will keep our current low, but it'll actually have at least something. And uh, this will also allow us, this, this cur low current here will allow us to invert the signal. So Anyways, that's it. I'm just using them. They may or may not be right. I mean, who knows? I, I could probably get better performance if I adjust the value of those, but I think we'll start here. All right, let me build it. Let's see what happens. All right, let's see if this works. Okay, I'm going to build this. Um, watch me do it. All right, I think I got it. It took a little longer than I thought. I uh, screwed up some areas. I'm actually not happy with the layout, so I wanted to give some more space to this, but let's plug it in and see if this thing works. All right. Here's my five volts going in. Something's wrong. My light is still on. Not working. Let me figure it out. Yes, I got it working. <laughs> All right, my problem was actually quite uh, straightforward. It's not, I, it was this, let me show you. I had not grounded this first um, uh, MOSFET. I, th this wire was missing. That's all it was, oversight. Circuit works properly. Take a look at this, right? So now my phantom light is gone. And when I push any of these buttons, it turns on. So this is the lowest intensity. This is the next intensity. Here's a maximum intensity. Oh, not maximum. And if I push all three, I get the maximum intensity. Solved it. <laughs> Problem solved. And you know what? It wasn't as spooky as my childhood story. Or was it? 